But let's, let me just talk a bit first of all about you know, why I think uh, door knocking is the most effective and why I think it's the best method out of all the other alternatives out there. And kind of like how we have on our website, if you don't want to believe the Bible, sometimes uh, the best way to, uh, I guess, reason in your own mind why the Bible is the best and most rational thing to believe is uh, what, are our, what are the alternatives? I mean, if you're not going to believe the Bible, what would then you put in its place? And I really feel that's one way you can approach, you know, why we knock doors and uh, why I don't think other methods, uh, while they, well, they are valid and they are still considered soul winning, why I don't think they're the most effective. Because, um, you know, when you compare, you know, what would you replace door knocking with, um, they don't seem to do the same job, I think, as door knocking does. But, you know, let's first come at it from the perspective of, you know, comparing passive ways of soul winning, passive ways of soul winning, you know, versus proactive ways of soul winning. So by passive, I mean, uh, you know, non-confrontational. Uh, you know, you don't initiate the discussion, you don't initiate any communication. Um, and really, there's only one method when it comes to a passive way of soul winning. And that's what we would, you know, know as lifestyle evangelism where you, know, you just live your life and you just you know, have a good testimony and you wait for people to come to you to ask you, you know, what do you have and to ask you, you know, what you believe. You don't initiate that, um, that, that conversation at all. And what are the problems with lifestyle evangelism? Well, number one is it only reaches people that you know. I mean, if you have only a passive form of soul winning, how then are we reaching people that we don't know? I mean, think about it. If the first disciples only did passive soul winning, how would the gospel have gotten anywhere else? It would have just stayed within their circle because, you know, back in those times, you know, we weren't connected through technology. We weren't connected through international uh, 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 relationships and things like that. You know, there were communities of people that were totally disconnected from other communities. So how does that message of the gospel go from one community to the next if we only do this passive form of lifestyle evangelism? And, you know, I would say people that promote, you know, lifestyle evangelism or promote a passive form of evangelism or soul winning, um, you know, if your philosophy... If your philosophy of soul winning or evangelism puts an upper limit on how many people to reach, I think you need a new philosophy in soul winning. Because if Jesus is saying, uttermost part of the earth, preach the gospel to every creature, teach all nations, but your philosophy is, well, I'm only going to stick to this circle or the people I come across in my day-to-day -day life, that obviously is not aligned with the goal that Jesus gave us, which is to preach the gospel to every creature. So if somebody has an upper limit on who they should reach, where their circle of responsibility ends. If it's not the uttermost part of the earth, then that needs to change because that's the upper limit that Jesus Christ himself gave us. You know, uh, Michael, me and uh, Kevin, we were soul winning in San Susi. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was San Susi. And I was, I was partnered with Kevin. And we came across this, uh, this Greek Orthodox guy who, you know, wasn't, wasn't aggressive or rude, but, um, you know, when we knocked on his door, he basically made the comment of, you know, you, you don't need to go out and to, to, to bother people and to, to tell people. He's like, he said, you know, we live in the information age. We live in the age where people can go on the internet, you know, they really want to know uh, about Jesus. They really want to research about spiritual things. They all look it up. You know, you don't need to, uh, to go to them and tell them. There's nothing you can tell them that they can't find themselves. And, you know, he's got a valid point because, you know, you can find whatever you want. But that's not the only reason why we need to do a confrontational sort of evangelism. Because I explained to him, yes, if people are looking, if people are trying to find answers, they can find the answers. They'll go on the internet and they'll find all the information they need. The problem is most people don't. Because people are busy, people are uh, living amongst the thorns, you know, to, to speak from that parable. You know, they're busy, they're not thinking about things like that. So part of the reason why we need to have a confrontational or proactive sort of evangelism where we go and talk to people when they're not thinking about it is hopefully it'll spark them to think about it. Um, and it'll, it'll bring up that conversation. And I was saying to this guy, you know, today you probably weren't thinking about spiritual things. You weren't thinking about where you were going when you die today. But now that we're here, hopefully 
it'll cause you to think about it. Even though you know, you're not going to give us the time to explain, hopefully he'll read the pamphlet and he'll think about that question that we have on the front of our pamphlet, which is, if you die today, are you 100% sure that you go to heaven? So passive, passive uh, versus proactive. So we know that passive, you know, not only is it not scriptural, it doesn't reach everybody. Um, and you know, not everybody is concerned with how you're living your life. They're probably very concerned with how they're living their life and the problems that they have. Um, and people are just by nature self-centered, aren't they? So let's look, at, look, let's look at it from a proactive point of view, what the different methods are within the proactive or confrontational category. And you know, you know being proactive about evangelism, that's really the only way that you're going to reach people that you don't know, right? You can't reach somebody you don't know or you've never met before by any sort of passive um, or lifestyle evangelism. And I, in my mind, I've broken this into three categories that I think covers all the different methods that are out there. And, you know, number one, I've, I've called uh, like a broadcasting type message, a, a broadcasting type uh, method where, you know, you are proactive, meaning you're making it a point to, to do something, you know, out of your normal life to, to talk to people or get the message out to people that you wouldn't normally come across. And what I would put in this uh, broadcasting type category is, you know, open air preaching. Open air preaching is one where, you know, you may set up somewhere and stand in a box where there's a lot of people present and then you broadcast that message, right? And you're just basically yelling it and, or, or trying to get their attention, trying to draw a crowd in a public place. Now, what are the issues with open air preaching? Well, number one is it takes a lot of boldness, doesn't it? I mean, you know, I, I would say some of you probably would be fearful to stand in front of a crowd of people that you know and, and share something. You know, how much more fearful is it if you have that issue to stand in front of a crowd of people you don't know that might be adverse to what you're saying uh, and then stand up and give a clear, loud presentation? Uh, that takes a lot of boldness. You know, it also takes a very loud voice. You know, not all of us have the sort of voice that projects, um, that is, is maybe easy to understand, whatever. It requires a loud voice. You know, number three, it only works in a public place where many people are present. Because in a private place, probably somebody doesn't want you shouting over everyone and, and, and screaming at everybody. Um, so it's only going to work in a public place where you're even allowed to do it. And it's only going to work when many people are present, right? Because let's say you go somewhere and you want to preach open air and there's only one person sitting there. I mean, you, you probably think, the, the person's probably thinking, why are you shouting at me? Why don't you just, why don't you just talk to me? So it's only going to work when there's a lot of people around um, and in a public place. But number four, an issue I see with open air preaching is, you know, it can, be, it can easily be offensive because it's not, it's, it's not a method where you can share with somebody gently, where you can sit, share with somebody softly, share with somebody privately. I mean, unless you have really good sound equipment, uh, you have to shout and yell this message. And it's very hard to seem loving and not seem arrogant when you're just screaming at them and telling them how sinful they are. Uh, it's just hard to come across the right way. I'm sure there is a way, but I'm just saying that it, it would lean towards being um, a, a bit more offensive to people and they may, they may not receive it as well. So broadcasting, like an open-air preaching. What other sort of broadcasting methods are there? Um, the other one I could think of was advertising. You know, you might put billboards up, posters up, uh, you know, letterbox dropping, whatever. Um, you know, maybe, may pay, maybe you might pay for ads on radio, ads in movies, ads in, you know, football events and rugby events, uh, or, you know, ads in, in the previews in movies, but just generally advertising. Now, what are a couple of the problems with that? I mean, the obvious one is they're very cost prohibitive aren't they? I mean, you have to spend a lot of money. I don't know how, even how much, you know, when you drive to my place and you see that billboard across King George, I don't even know how much it would cost to, to put a billboard up. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not against any of these methods. I don't think any of these methods are sinful or they're wrong. Uh, I'm making the case here of why they're not a, as effective as door knocking. But I think it'd be great sometimes to add these onto our door knocking. I mean, if our church, you know, did have the money, I mean, it'd be great that, you know, be putting billboards up and, and putting ads out there. I mean, if you can get a really captivating ad and, and have the money to pay for it to be, to be on during primetime television, I mean, that's something awesome if we ever did that one day. 
Um, but I don't think it's going to replace door knocking. Number one, it's cost prohibitive. prohibitive. Number two, it's also talent prohibitive. Because you, know, you need somebody that knows how to design, graphic design or knows how to you know, uh, put, put a video together, uh, the talent to, to be in that video and be able to uh, captivate people in terms of doing that. But you know what I thought about you know, advertising? You know, it's, it's a great way to get a message out to a lot of people, but you know, it, it seems like it targets the mass audience, but it, it doesn't seem as effective when you just want to get a message to an individual. Because think about it, you might put all these ads on TV, you might you know, put all these videos online, you might uh, you know, put this billboard on these busy highways, but what if your neighbor three doors down never watches that show, never sees that ad, never sees that poster or that billboard, never drives on that road? It doesn't matter how much you spend on advertising and how much you pour billions and billions of dollars trying to get this message out to the masses, you're not getting it to the individual that just lives down the street. So, you know, it targets the masses, but it's not going to get every individual because you're not going to catch everyone in that net. Um, so we need a method that gets to those individuals. And the, and the other problem I find with these broadcasting methods is that they're not interactive. It doesn't give a person a chance to, to you, it doesn't allow you to make sure that they understand, to ask questions, to, to clarify things. Um, and you know, it's funny because people want to spend all this money getting this message out and all these fancy ways of preaching the gospel when you just think, why can't you just walk up to the people and just talk to them? And it reminds me of that, uh, that parody that Ikea came out with of the Ikea book book. And they were making fun of, uh, you know, Apple. Apple was trying to like, make everything so complex and streamlined and all these things and, and so technologically advanced. And basically, Ikea was making a parody where they were advertising their catalogue and saying, you know, it's, it's very responsive. You can even feel the pages and there's zero lag. But I just had this idea that, you know, we're just going back to the basics. Right? Everyone wants to make things so complicated and so expensive and so technical where what can be more basic than just walking up to somebody, opening your Bible, asking them whether they have heard the gospel before and explaining it to them. Just going back to being simple. So that's one method of proactive evangelism. Another is what, what I have labeled as um, like invitational or where you invite somebody along to something to, to watch something or to listen to something. And things in this category would be, you know, people that have gospel meetings, where you have a meeting where people come and they hear the gospel preached by uh, a professional speaker. Uh, maybe you make a documentary. You make a documentary and when you give it to them, I would ca classify it in, in this invite category because you're saying, you're inviting them and saying, hey, can you listen to this, uh, this CD or listen to this DVD or watch this movie? Uh, I know some churches put on musical concerts. Or they put on, on a concert and you invite all these people to come and listen to the music and then maybe there's a gospel presentation preached. Or maybe you'll create a musical or some sort of entertainment where people are invited along to come and listen. I would put internet media in the same category because you, you, you're inviting people to go to this website to, to read more about it. Um, or something like, you know, Answers in Genesis, which is where they, you know, they created the Creation Museum. They create, like, you know, now they're making the Noah's Ark Encounter. I personally do not prefer to, uh, to support those projects because Answers in Genesis preach the repent of your sins gospel. So whilst I think they have some good material on science, it's hard for me to, with good conscience, put my money towards anything that they do and support that because they don't preach. They preach work salvation. So, but what are some, what are some issues with um, this inviting method? Well, again, a lot of these things that you have to put on, it's very cost and talent prohibitive. You know, if you're going to build a creation museum, you need millions and billions of dollars for the land and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, and, and I always think, you know, if you're going to spend the time to go invite people to these events, right, if you're going to put on this huge event, now you're going to need some form to, some, some method to tell people about that event, right? So if you make a museum or you make, uh, you have a gospel meeting or you make a documentary, you have a concert or a musical, now pretty much you're going back to the methods in method one, if you're not going to do either door knocking or some sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one soul winning, you're going to go back to either one of the methods in, in the category one, broadcasting the message, even tell people about that event. And then you sort of think to yourself, well, if I'm going to talk to somebody, 
out wherever and invite them along to an event, I may as well just give them the gospel right there and then, right? So it sort of negates the need for this, these invitational events. I mean, it would support what we're doing, but why would it replace it? Because if you're going to go out and invite people to all these different things and talk to them about something, why not just preach them the gospel at the same time or ask them the question there and then? So you're either going back to number one, which was the broadcasting methods, or you're going on to category three, which is you know, a method where you engage people, where you interact with somebody, and you actually get to discuss um, what you're actually talking about. Now, you know, door knocking obviously fits in that category. And another method, which I really think are, are, the, are the same methods, is whether you go to a public place and, and go and talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, or you go to their house and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. I really think they're the same thing. I know we think of it as you know, street evangelism, and one is door knocking. But the reason why I think that they are the exact same thing is because the only difference between these two methods is where you're doing it, right? the location at which you're trying to engage a person that you've never met before, um, and, and maybe the timing of it. Because some people, they, you know, they have a proactive evangelism where they don't sort of schedule it, but they just, you know, they'll just take time out of their day whenever they get some time and go talk to some people, which is fine as well. I guess the advantage of something being scheduled is that you make sure you do it. Because if you just do it when you have time or when you feel like doing it, like we discussed last week, chances are you may not do it as often as uh, you should or as you could if you actually made it a point, prioritized it, and scheduled it into your days or into your weeks. So really with this, you're either going to... There's only really two ways you can approach a total stranger, somebody you've never met before, that you never will ever meet in your day-to-day -day life, you're either going to meet them in a public area or you're going to try and meet them at, at, at their home. Really, I don't, know, I don't think there's any other way you're going to meet a stranger um, other than those two methods. Well, why do I think that knocking doors is better than um, trying to stop people and talk to people in public areas? Well, number one, if you just limit yourself to street evangelism, my first question is, well, why, why limit yourself to one area? You know, if you're going to go to the city or you're going to go to, um, you know, I don't know, Bankstown or wherever where there are a lot of people uh, doing things there and you're going to go there and talk to them and try and stop them and, and talk to them about the gospel. My first question is, well, why limit yourself to that, just that one area? Because the only difference between street evangelism and door-to-door -door soul winning is we're just canvassing the whole area because you stop people on the way when they're walking to and from their house or they're out in the shops. Maybe we're on, we're on a street where there are shops we're doing that street as well. So we're not limiting ourselves to just one area and saying, hey, we're just going to go back to that one area um, and talk to people there. We're just going to canvas the whole area. But number two as well, because you're in a public place where there are other people around, people tend to be more self-conscious, don't they? Like when you try and stop somebody, let's say sitting at a bus stop, and there are other people sitting at that bus stop, how the other people respond sometimes depends on how the first person responds. If the first person doesn't want the gospel track, generally the next people don't want to either because people are sheep, people are self-conscious, and when there are other people watching them, they're, they're often thinking, you know, why are you talking to me and not somebody else? You know, why did you stop me? So I just feel that that is a limitation that doesn't happen when you go door to door. People aren't self-conscious. You know, they're in their own area of comfort because they're at their home. You know, number three, I find that it's a bit harder for a new person who's just getting into soul winning, just getting into evangelism to start when it's in a public area. Because not only is it, are the people that you're talking to more self-conscious, but the people that are doing it for the first time that maybe aren't as confident as we are, they're a bit more self-conscious as well. Um, so it's a little harder to get them. It's a, it's a larger barrier of fear that they need to get over before they're willing to do something public where a lot of people can see what they're doing. And, you know, number four, I find, and, you know, these are not hard and fast rules, you know, hard and fast things because, you know, it doesn't always apply. But, you know, in my opinion, it's, it, I find that when you try and stop people in a public area that are out and about, more often than not, they're busy doing something. You know, because when I am out and about, I'm out and about because I need to get somewhere. I need to do something. I need to buy something. Like, I, I've got a schedule that I need to keep to because there's things I need to do. You know, I don't always have time to stop. And yes, you know, there are people that are out there that are just hanging around, that are just, you know, loitering or 
you know, wasting time or you know, spending time with friends that, are, that do have the time to talk. And that's why I'm totally not against you know, street evangelism because that's just part of canvassing, right? It's just part of preaching to everybody. I think there's a, there's a time and a place for it. But I wouldn't totally replace street evangelism with door knocking for the reasons that I've mentioned. So let's get on to door knocking. So we've talked about you know, uh, passive forms of evangelism and then we've got the proactive forms of evangelism where you broadcast a message, you advertise, you open air preach, you know, or you invite somebody to an event that you're organizing and then we've got the, in the, uh, the engaging and discussion, discussion and interacting type methods which is either street evangelism and then we get on to door knocking which is what we do. So we've already talked about why the other methods I don't think are as effective as door knocking and what are some advantages to door knocking? Well, number one is, you know, everybody in an area lives somewhere, don't they? So it's a systematic way of at least attempting to reach every single person in a geographical location. Um, you know, number two, so that's number one, everyone lives somewhere. Number two, it's systematic, right? Because we can, we can track where we've been, you know, how, how, how much we've gone through and that's what we're doing with Spodio and um, you know, hopefully we'll get a map up there soon where we can actually highlight it and something you can see as soon as you come here. You know, number three where we were talking about you know, in a public setting with, uh, versus a private setting because you know, when, I feel when you go to somebody's house they're in their domain, aren't they? So they're the one in control, they're the one in charge we're the ones that are coming to a, a, a situation where they are comfortable. So I feel that it's easier for them to open up because they're a bit more confident, they're, 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 they're where they're, they feel safe, and it's better, and as soon as you start that conversation and you get into that conversation, you're in a private setting. Nobody else is watching, nobody else is listening, and I think it's a really great sort of setting for people to have that, um, that conversation. You know, number four, it's, it's low cost. You know, it doesn't, doesn't cost millions and billions of dollars for property and you know, talent and all that sort of stuff, uh, advertising. And you know, I can't remember what number I'm up to, but the next one is, um, you know, it's personalized, isn't it? When you, when you talk to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, you don't have to just, when, when, you see, when you broadcast a message, you have to have a cookie cutter method for everybody that might listen to your message. But when you talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, you can cater what you're talking about to that person's concerns, that person's questions. And you just cannot do that with some sort of mass marketing type method. They can talk, you know, they can ask questions, you know, you can ask them questions, you can clarify things, and that's not something you can do with any other method that is a uh, mass audience. And think about this, guys. You know when politicians campaign? You know, when, when politicians want to get their name out there and they want to engage the community, what do they do? They knock doors, don't they? So they knock doors because they know that's how you reach everyone. There's a reason why salespeople and, and politicians knock on people's doors to try and talk to them about community issues, talk to them about you know, uh, uh, issues that are happening in government because they know that is the only way they can reach every single citizen in the area. What other method can do it? And that's why we do it. We don't do it because, you know, I don't personally believe that the Bible has mandated that this is the method that uh, everyone does. We do see the example of apostles and disciples going house to house and, and, and preaching the gospel in every house. But people can make the argument, well, it's because they didn't have the internet back then, they didn't have TV back then. So, you know, I'll give them that, that, you know, we can use things like the internet and technology and, you know, we can record the sermons and put them on the internet. So we can't take this hard line of, well, because that's all we see in the New Testament, it means other methods are not what God intended or are sinful or are wrong. But we can make the argument of why, you know, Jesus didn't need all these things because it is the most effective way, in my opinion, of how to get the gospel out there. But what are some, what are some problems or objections to door knocking? There's, there's, really, there's really only like two I can think of. and I don't know whether they're really objections, but you know, one is uh, you know, that people don't like it. You know, people don't like you coming up to them and talking to them and coming to their property. And, um, but let me ask you, is there any method that, that people will like, that everyone will like? There's no, there's no method of telling people about Jesus that everybody is going to like. So that's not going to stop me from you know, going to their house and talking to them for the other reasons that I've uh, mentioned. 
And the other one, which I don't even know is, is an objection, where people would say, well, what if, I, what if a person is not able to walk or not able to talk? Well, you know, I think the exception proves the rule, you know. Well, you know, obviously people normally can walk and normally can talk if, if they just, you know, because if it wasn't for the curse and they can do it. And, if, you know, if they can't walk and they can't talk, then, you know, then they have these other methods that they can get involved in.